there's been some news that has come out recently that has made me extremely mid to long term bullish in the crypto market. And really what it comes down to is a excellent strategy that's going to be put forth by Coinbase. And I think a lot of centralized exchanges and organizations will probably adopt this. And what I'm talking about is there was an article that came out which talked about how Coinbase says that there's just no way to register with the SEC amid calls for compliance. Now, on this channel, I've said there's a couple of ways of hitting back at the SEC. One of those was to sue the SEC and go on the offensive, which I still believe could be a pretty uh, well-done strategy. But Coinbase is a little bit differently. So this is the first things first, is they say, look, it's impossible for compliance. And Coinbase Chief Policy Officer Figar Shazad said, We've tried and there's no way to do it. In fact, we submitted a petition with the SEC back in June where we enumerated the specific issues that the agency would have to resolve for crypto platforms to be able to come in and register. And Shrizad said, despite filing a list of questions asking how to register with the commission, the SEC has not responded. The way Gary Gensler was asked the same question, he goes, look, they can do whatever they want to do, but they need to work with the SEC or we can continue on the course with more enforcement actions. Meaning what he's saying here is that you can keep screwing around, but we're just going to give you well notices. We're going to take you to court and the enforcement action. That's what we're going to do because we're the SEC. Asked whether the SEC has engaged with crypto firms, which is what Coinbase is saying they're not doing. Gensler said it really is on these entrepreneurs and business leaders in the crypto space to come in and talk to us which I thought is odd. He didn't really answer the question. And the second thing is when Coinbase went in there about a year and a half ago and said, hey, I want to do an earn program. They said, here's a Wells notice. We're going to sue the pants off you. Thanks for coming in. So that is the problem that is happening. So what does Coinbase do? Well, first of all, there's two options. Again, legal. I thought, again, suing the SEC. Brian Armstrong says, look, we'll go through the court process. We'll defend staking in court if needed. So we are ready to do those things. And people will say, well, Rob, they don't want to do that because the SEC is unbeatable. No, it's not. Mark Cuban beat them in 2013 for insider trading. And just remember that court cases, just because you're an incumbent, uh, technology sometimes wins out. This is in 2003. This is a court case of voice over internet protocol, a little company called Vonage. And they were sued uh, in uh, Minnesota and the big telecommunications company says, look, these guys are doing everything for feaster, faster, cheaper, and easier. We don't like that. Sue them and make them pay. And they said, no, this is a totally different thing. This is uh, a new technology, and we're not going to allow that. I'll link this article in the description. This essentially is part of the process that allowed voice over internet protocol, which you are using right now for free, to reach you and your handheld device or desktop application. So again, you can go the legal route, or I thought this was great. Coinbase is speeding up plans to expand outside the U.S. So <clears throat> what's happening here? Coinbase spokesperson said in an email that the company is accelerating work on its go broad or go deep strategy. And this includes growing its presence in every continent except for Antarctica. What does this mean? There's a blog post, and this is what they want to do. Go broad and go deep. Go broad, they want to launch foundational products that are a gateway to Web3 and crypto in every country. And go deep is to launch localized infrastructure and public-facing products with a full suite of services. Again, what they're really doing is like going, look, America may not be for us. I mean, we'll do what we have to do here and we'll defend ourselves in court, one prong. But we will also branch out globally, compete with Binance. That'll be our second prong because we are a publicly traded company and we want to be successful. Now, the thing is with the SEC, they have to deal with a potential court case against Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, whoever else is going to come forward. And then they also have to compete with this, which is they're already suing Ripple, which has gone on for two years straight now. And also, on another front, they have to fight the battle against Grayscale and their Bitcoin trust because they want that Bitcoin ETF, which the court has even questioned and said, what's the problem here? You probably should have approved this. So on top of that, it is interesting what's happening with that uh, case because this is from Tom Crown. He said, yeah, it looks like Grayscale Bitcoin Trust looks uh, weirdly bullish. Maybe there's some news we don't know about. Maybe a Bitcoin ETF will be approved. Look, I've been around since 2017. I'm not holding my breath for a Bitcoin ETF. But it is interesting just how spread thin potentially the SEC is. It is a government agency. Of course, that's why they're asking for more funding. 
but it just seems like it's a it's a total farce for them to just fight all these different fronts when they can just go okay look we're just here for regulation not regulation by enforcement we're just here for for you guys to come in we kind of work with you and go that route instead of just trying to direct the traffic so to me i think it's gonna be very difficult so there's two fronts really that they're having to fight and are, are the different things that um, these companies are trying to do coinbase is like okay we're just gonna leave america and we're going to not leave totally, but we're going to branch out and we're going to be more of an international company. The second one is, OK, we're going to fight you here in courts and we can do that all day long. And the third option is kind of like what Kraken uh, is doing, which is saying we're going to stay here and we're going to come at you, which is they're going to launch a U.S. crypto bank because they already had to bend the knee with the SEC and say, OK, we're not going to do any kind of staking. That's fine. You know, with the problems with uh, Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank, they're like, but you know, we still like America and we want to stick around and want to innovate and the banks are going to be here. So we're just going to start our own bank. And we talked about this yesterday and it looks like that is going on swimmingly. So again, three different options. You can stick around, but leave America and go globally. You can fight here in the legal court system, or you can do a new product and come right at the SEC. And that is why I appreciate the different products that stick around and say, you know what, we'll see what happens. And one of those will be Sweatcoin. Now, I had Oleg, who is uh, one of the co-founders of Sweatcoin, and they had come out and said, look, in September, we're going to bring our Web3 wallet to America uh, of this year. And when I covered this, this deep dive about seven, eight months ago, I didn't think they were going to do it. But they're like, yeah, we're going to come back. And uh, the legal team said not to you know, launch in the USA, but we're going to bring it back and we're going to see what happens. So... I had to ask Oleg, why did they do that and what's on the horizon? So just take a listen. All right, everybody. So what I want to do is bring in Oleg just to give us an update about what the heck is going on. So there's some things, Oleg, that I didn't think you guys would get to. So welcome back to the show. Thank you. You know, it's absolute pleasure always to talk to you and connect with you and, uh, you know, to give an update to your audience. Yeah, this is crazy. Can you, this is how long it's been, man. It's been since... July 4th. This, this was our, our, our deep dive video. We talked, about, we talked about the cut, the community, the utility, the team, the tokenomics, and how you guys monetize this system for a free uh, walk to earn program. And then we talked yeah. about where things were going. And I thought it was very interesting. We, got, we went deep into it. Then as time has gone on, we actually did a, a January uh, walkathon and, and we gave away some pretty great prizes. So I want to say thank you. Thank you, you for, for running being, that. Yeah, that was fun, right? A lot of people got uh, yeah. hopefully a little bit better in shape. And the, today, the, the, the big news was this. We talked about a couple weeks ago, which I honestly, when you told me that you were coming into the U.S. with the securities and all the different things with Gary Gensler, I thought, well, okay. I mean, he said 2023, but I'm like, maybe they'll push 2024, but you didn't. It looks like September 12th, the sweat wallet, the cryptocurrency wallet is coming to America. So everybody that has accumulated their sweat sweat coins can now put those into sweat the crypto. So just talk to us real quick about that and we'll then we'll get into like some roadmap and some other things. Sure, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> I mean despite the kind of the scary nature of uh, what's going on in the US and you know kind of um, all the kind of recent events, actually right. there is quite a lot of clarity uh, that is emerging around types of products and propositions that, you know, kind of U.S. regulators are having issues with. What also emerges very loud and clear is that the remit or the objective of their existence is to protect uh, U.S. investors or U.S. You know, kind of retail yeah. uh, from crooks and thieves and scammers, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, kind of one of the things that we're realizing is the nature of current enforcement is that, you know, it feels like that objective got superseded with something a lot simpler, which is, okay, just whack them all, anything in crypto. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, they're right. They're totally right because we let you know, sort of fox in a, you know, in the, in the chicken house. There are a lot of examples of unscrupulous and just, you know, True. frankly, nefarious projects and individuals out there. However, 
I think that we also have grown up so and we really, you know, can, if you really put your main principle at heart to protect US retail and US citizens from harm, mm -hmm. then you start thinking, okay, what is the definition? What, you know, can I, what, what, what actually needs to be happening and what does the project need to do in order to be able to accuse of causing this harm? And one of the things that we're doing extremely well and all around the world is we're actually making the world more physically active, making right. people move forward. We are able to monetize this user base, not by charging them, not by extracting value from their pockets, but you know, monetizing this business and effectively giving these users value from their physical activity. So it is going to be an extremely difficult and a very onerous thing to do to kind of accuse us the, the project of, you know, kind of that whose goal and whose mission has always been to make the world more physically active of, you know, coming into the US for the benefit of kind of extracting value and pulling it from people's pockets. Right. So... You know, basically the first principle is we know our ethics, we know how robust we are and our oversight, and we know the mission and the purpose of our project. And therefore, we know that we cannot resolve right now differences of views on utility, security, all of that, you know, yeah. and this is going to last for a very, very long time. But given how much pool we're having from our users, including yourself, that, you know, kind of mentions entering to the US regularly. But, you know, I get three, five tweets a day, emails a day, you know, kind of when you're coming to the US, we really need you here, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, and let's be frank, I mean, US is not one of those countries that, you know, has the, you know, kind of the thinnest waistline in, uh, around the world. So, you that know, is also of, true. <laughs> So, and, and, and I'm not trying to kind of knock anyone here, but, you know, kind of it, it feels like if there is a country that we will add a lot of value to, it is the United States. Second point, damages. There is no way that we as a project will be causing damages to the, you know, kind of to the US retail. I'm, you know, I just can't see how this can actually happen. And the third thing is, if you're actually looking at the regulation and the spirit of it and what regulators are actually trying to accomplish, so let's assume that regulation was self-imposed rather mm -hmm. than, you know, you're coming in and then you're ticking all the boxes and, you know, kind of only then you consider regulated. But, you know, if there was a document or set of documents that set out the spirit of what genuine in good faith operation in the US is. And what we're effectively doing right now is we are going through all of this and we're doing absolutely everything to make sure that we are fully compliant. So the, you know, kind of, you know, we would like to be regulated. We would like to be fully compliant. We would like to be able to bring the value that we have in other countries in the world into the US, but we are fully realistic that in the given situation, if you follow the path that you supposedly should follow, mm -hmm. it's just not going to result in absolutely anything, you know, kind of constructive and it will set us back by multiple years. What we would like to do is come in in absolutely good faith and do everything to make sure that there is no opportunity to claim that we are doing anything wrong and we are operating in any way in a different fashion as if we were regulated in the United States. So we yeah. don't want to bring damages. We don't want to stay secretive. We want to bring all the disclosures and absolute clarity how our product operates and how these tokens are used and, you know, can, et cetera, et cetera. So it is definitely a risk-based decision, but we would like to have a constructive dialogue with 
regulators where they understand that, again, we're not coming in with nefarious objectives or whatever, but we're coming in because the market needs us, the market asks for us, mm -hmm. and we are doing absolutely everything to make sure that we are compliant and ticking absolutely every box, with exception of probably, actually, the box being ticked and the paper being signed, mm -hmm. which we know has not happened ever. Ever. So a couple, well, great, great answer. A couple of things. What you just said is exactly what all the centralized exchanges and every single crypto project out there wants to do. They want to be compliant. They don't want to be on the bad side. They don't want to do the right things, but there is no clarity being given. And the second thing that I, I will say is that when you say, because I know some people haven't, they, they know I talk about Sweatcoin, they know that I own a bunch of it because I am super biased. And the only thing I talk about on this channel is the things that I actually own. When you say things like, uh, you know, you, we monetize in a certain way. We're not monetizing you. You have to understand, and we talked about this in the deep dive video, and this is actually the, the question number three, the revenue generation of how you do these things. One of the things right now for everybody who is watching this video uh, at home, you probably watched this on YouTube. And before you watched this, this video, there was an ad and there might've been two or three ads. And that's one of the ways at which they monetize their app. They don't sell your data or anything like that. They do those things. And also there's different products that you can purchase within the app itself, which is how they also monetize. So it's a little bit different than you may have heard of like other uh, move to earn type of programs where you have to like purchase a very expensive NFT or actually now a cheap NFT. It's not like that. Everything's free from the, from the beginning. You earn those tokens. Those are your tokens and you can use them in a certain way, but you guys have figured out a way to monetize it. And that's why you were one of the, you're either one or number three of the top apps in the global for health and fitness for 2022. I think that was one of the reasons. Was I off yeah. anything I said, Oleg? No, it, it, it's absolutely spot on. We've never transferred or sold or in any way monetized or used our users' data. We just ethically, we do not think that this is right. And also legally, we are a European company. Mm -hmm. All the data from all over the world is kept in the, you know, kind of in Europe, uh, which is governed by GDPR. So, you know, can we are compliant with one of the most draconian um, kind of privacy protecting legal frameworks in the world. And yes, our business is to generate revenues without sort of charging users directly. We do have premium subscriptions. So, you know, we make a little bit of money directly from users, but definitely not a lion's share. And you, as you absolutely rightly said, we are not a Ponzi scheme where you first need to pay in order to be able to participate. It's absolutely free. And we've been going for eight years now. So, you know, can we know how to build a business? And I think that there is a very interesting narrative that, you know, kind of a lot of people in Web3 are sort of pushing where Web3 is fundamentally extremely very different type of business from Web2. But in essence, every business, no matter what, if it's a Web2 or Web3, needs to generate more revenue than they're spending. That's a lifeblood of the business. And if you manage to build that business, that means it's sustainable business. And that means that everything is going to be fine. No matter how you structure it, no matter what legal framework is, if you're able to generate more revenue than you're spending on cost, you have a good business. And this yeah. is exactly what we are focusing on without, you know, kind of spending an awful lot of time and very, very complicated explanations about flywheels and 17 degrees of separation between one token and the other. And, you know, kind of all of these very confusing terms mm -hmm. that some projects are using. We're building sustainable business by making the world physically active and charging on the way for it. Right. This, to me, when I was, when I was choosing projects to talk about and on my second channel, this is why I chose you guys it was because you already had a, a an economic model model that was actually proven to be trustworthy and actually worked. And I thought to myself, well, think that web two, then they should do pretty well on web three. And it's the same, also the same reason why I chose Gensukishi, which is another t different type of, it's a metaverse 
uh, a game where they already had it already on uh, Nintendo. They had it on PlayStation uh, 4 or 5. They had an iOS and Android, and they brought it over to Web3. And I thought if they already have the community, the utility, the team, and they actually got the tokenomics right, it's the same yeah. thing. So you and those guys, it just made sense to me. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And, you know, can everyone, no matter what business you're building, just focus on building sustainable business that, you know, brings value to the world. And I think that, you know, can, I am absolutely confident that, you know, the situation with regulation is mm -hmm. going to be resolved. I am absolutely confident that rather than just simply trying to assume that anything crypto is bad for U.S. retail, yeah. we will actually start seeing that, you know, kind of as any other business, there is bad business and then there is good business. And, you know, kind of I'm really looking forward to, you know, crypto becoming mainstream. You know, let's face it, it is going to happen and we need to get there. And I just don't want to be waiting for the next five years to be able to serve our American users who are gagging for us to be there for them. Well, you and me both, brother. And I will tell you this. Right now, we were talking We're talking on a, a Monday. Uh, it is uh, the bank run day. We can see that, of course. There's a little <laughs> bit of, a, of an inversion for, for crypto and the things that are going on. So we know that, that, that we're in the right place at the right time, potentially. But Oleg, let's talk about, and we'll finish this up with just talking about what's on the horizon for you. Now, I know this just happened as far as minting difficulty. We went from 1,000 steps for, for sweat yeah. to now 3,000 steps. And that is to make things more difficult because tokenomics. And then talk about this real quick, and then we'll, we'll finish up with a little bit on the roadmap. So, Yeah. Now, um, I, if you remember my uh, kind of uh, our original interview, uh, you know, what we're building, what sweat is, is actually a primary unit of physical activity value. But let's think about it as a startup. You know, you, you know, startups don't just go, ta-da, and all of a sudden it's a perfectly functioning business, right? Like a baby, you need mm -hmm. to invest. You need to teach them to speak, to walk, talk, etc. And that's basically what we're doing right now. In order for sweat in long term to become that primary unit of physical activity value, we need to help it. And effectively, right now, we are investing not just the value of physical activity but the value of attention which we monetize mm. on the way right? right but with token economics built as it is right now you know kind of the value or the step value of each sweat is growing and what happens is that maybe it's not necessarily the major factor in determining the value of the token but right. it is a factor nonetheless Let's give right. it a little bit of time where the value of physical activity is going to become more important and weighted. You know, the overall value perception is going to be weighted a lot more towards physical activity than our ability to monetize attention, which is where we're starting right now. The process will continue. It is totally formulaic. You can look into our smart contract. Anyone and everyone can investigate and audit it and see for yourself exactly how it is developing. Oh. In terms of the roadmap, there is really, really cool stuff that is coming um, and you know, not very far from being released. The short-term stuff is we are in final stages of testing, you know, kind of crypto to crypto trading functionality. So you'd be able to, mm. you know, use assets that you have uh right now to trade in for other assets that you want to get but we're actually completely revising the approach to this interface because again you know mm -hmm. can we genuinely believe into a uh, mass market world into the world of you know kind of usability and user experience that is not driven by queries and smart contract design but by the way humans think and, uh, you know, kind of when you walk into 7-Eleven, you don't sort of go, I've got $56.97, what can I get for it? <laughs> Which is a very much a kind of trading or swap interface as, as of today. But right. you go in and you kind of go, well, I just want to have bread and milk, right? So, and that is exactly what we're building. We're building trading functionality that should allow you to choose what you want to get and then how you want to pay for it. And, you know, kind of, it seems simple and it seems 
you know, kind of really not, you know, kind of not, not, not terribly insightful. But mm. weirdly, interfaces like that do not mm. exist at the moment. So we basically re rethinking and redrawing the kind of how is crypto to crypto trading should be done. The other massively um, exciting area is the is the process that would be you know can claiming and earning. You know, right now what we have is uh, basically you open the wallet and you look at your balance and that's it, right? Right. You know, it's sort of you, you know, you're quite pleased with the you know kind of with the balance growing. Right. What we would like to do is to basically turn this instance into a an interesting engagement where you know rather than just simply being happy with your balance growing, you are thinking. How else can I get value out of this token that I've earned with my feet? You know, okay. do I want to, you know, kind of put it into a growth chart? Do I want to opt in to participate in a reward? You know, basically, it's like ongoing earning that gives you an opportunity to earn and choose things beyond just simply having it in your wallet got it and and this is the process that we are going through and right now with uh, with one of our product teams and the last bit is uh this sweat hero which is an incredibly cool um game that we have developed and we have an mvp so minimum viable product of it out with four to five thousand people Hmm. And the feedback is incredibly, incredibly positive. So the team busy developing this is going to release sort of challenge a friend or basically person to person uh, game. Right now you're playing against bots and very, very soon you're going to be able to basically engage uh, other people in the, uh, in the network uh, with, this, with this mechanic that allows you hmm. to win um, sweat if you are walking more than another person and if your finger dexterity is uh, better than theirs. Nice little competition. And then, then on, oh, on two prongs, lovely. one on physical and one on ability. That's interesting. Interesting way to do it. Absolutely. So there is obviously an awful lot more because uh, kind of one of the things that we are very determined is to get more utility for our token holders we already have more than 15 million of them mm. and governance and ability to influence the development of a network is kind of extremely important to us so one of the most interesting projects that we are uh, we're, we're doing right now is looking at how would we build a DAO of 100 million members right nothing like that has ever been built Nothing like that has ever existed, and it is an extremely exciting thing uh, that you know. Kind of, we are building the team to kind of to be thinking of and to start the process of on-chain voting and on-chain governance, where all token holders can influence the way the system and the platform is developing. One sneak preview that I will give is it does look like that it is most likely going to be a representative democracy. So rather than having a situation where millions and millions of users each vote on the basis of how many tokens they have, in order for this to be you know, moving faster and for decision making to you know, kind of be more professional, we are likely to have a some sort of representative board body, you know, kind of some sort of, you know, kind of table that will include selected individuals that will be elected by the community and their role at the table will be backed by all the token holders that will need to pledge their sweat, effectively giving these individuals mm -hmm. a you know, kind of a chair at the table uh, to, to be able to influence things on their behalf. 
which I'm really, really excited about because, you know, kind of, we don't really have an experience of building, you know, kind of uh, organizations of this size in, um, you know, kind of in, in, in Web3. Right. And then how many wallets do you have right now in Web3? Because in Web2, in, in web I want to say you have over 200 million downloads. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have more than 135 million registered users. Yeah, probably, you know, downloads. Yeah, probably about 200 million. Uh, hmm. 15 million token holders we have in Web3. And this, for obvious reasons, excludes United States. So we're very much looking forward to adding, you know, millions, if not tens of millions of uh, users who want to be physically active who are currently residing in the U.S. I am looking forward to this. You have no idea greatly because I want to hear the stories about how you guys interact with the regulators and what's happening behind the scenes. But Oleg, we'll talk about that. We got plenty of time. So Oleg, thanks so much for stopping by on the show. That was a lot of information in a short amount of time. If you are looking to get involved into Sweatcoin, there is a link in the description. It looks just like this. And you can watch the deep dive video we just showed. We can download the app. And then there's a leaderboard to try to beat me as far as steps. Anybody who <laughs> beats me for the month, and this is done every month, I pay you 50 sweat coins if you can beat me. Hint, you won't. But go ahead and try. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. I absolutely love this feature. This is, <laughs> you know, honestly, give it a go. Rob is a good walker. Uh, you're not going to beat him. <laughs> That's right. All right, everybody. So, so thanks for watching. We appreciate all of you for stopping by. Now let's jump back. Thank you very much. All right. So I hope that made sense. I want to thank uh, Oleg for coming back and uh, talking to us about what that all means. But again, I see these developments as extremely positive. It's not like we're going to get crushed. There is an offensive. It just might take a little bit of time. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is extremely time sensitive. But that's it. Thank you so much, and I uh, will see you on the next one.